I was working in IT sales at a company, and I wanted to take a break from my busy routine. I had been considering taking some time off for a while, but due to my hectic schedule, I never got the chance. Finally, I had the opportunity to take a one-week break, and I wanted to use it solely for myself. I planned a camping trip to a location that was far from the city, completely isolated and deep in the woods. I've always had a passion for camping and a desire for peaceful solitude. I looked forward to the peace and quiet, away from the distractions and demands of my daily life. The drive had been quite long. It had been almost three hours since I left home. After a lengthy drive through the deep woods, I parked my car in a spot, unloaded my gear, and after a bit of hiking, I found a small, open area surrounded by tall trees. The greenery was so dense that it seemed to stretch endlessly. This spot was truly perfect, peaceful, and beautiful. I set up my tent, gathered some firewood, and started a campfire. It was around 8 p.m., and it had already grown dark. I cooked dinner and began to enjoy the serene evening breeze. The sounds of nature filled the forest, rustling leaves and the gentle whisper of the wind. I felt completely at ease. The fatigue from work and the chaos of the city had completely melted away. I was sitting by the campfire, listening to songs on my earbuds, enjoying the freedom that comes with being alone in the woods. As the night grew darker, the air became colder, and I decided it was time to sleep. I extinguished the campfire, secured my food, and went into the tent. The comfort of my sleeping bag and the rhythmic sounds of the forest quickly lulled me to sleep. In the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up. At first I couldn't understand why my sleep had been interrupted. I listened intently and heard a faint, rustling sound, as if something or someone was moving through the forest. My heart started to race, and I tried to focus more on the noise. I reassured myself that it was probably just an animal, but as the rustling grew closer, it began to feel like something more menacing, something potentially dangerous. I picked up my flashlight, my hands trembling slightly, and opened the tent just enough to let the light shine outside. The beam of the flashlight illuminated the dark forest and the ground. For a moment, I didn't see anything unusual and began to feel somewhat reassured, but then the light revealed a figure standing in the shadows. The person had their hood up, and I couldn't see their face. My heart felt like it was pierced by an arrow. The figure stood completely still, as if waiting for something. I immediately turned off the flashlight and retreated into the tent, closing it tightly behind me. I gripped the flashlight firmly in my hand. My mind was racing with one thought. What should I do next? I decided to stay silent and see if the figure would leave. I hoped that whatever it was would lose interest and go away. The rustling started again, and now it seemed to be moving slowly around the campsite. I could hear twigs snapping and leaves crunching, but didn't see the figure. My mind was filled with dread. Was this a lost hiker, a ranger, or something more dangerous? I considered calling for help but was paralyzed by fear. I just hoped that whatever it was would lose interest and leave. Eventually, the sounds grew fainter, and the forest returned to its usual nighttime symphony. I took a deep breath, one I didn't realize I had been holding. My body slowly relaxed, but falling asleep was difficult. The image of that shadowy figure haunted my mind. In the morning, I emerged from my tent, exhausted and anxious. The sunlight offered some comfort, but the memories of the night lingered. I decided I needed to find out what that figure was or who had been watching me. I searched around the campsite, looking for any signs of an intruder. At the edge of the clearing, I found fresh human footprints leading into the forest. Daylight provided some relief, but the unease grew with the knowledge that someone had been near me. I followed the footprints which led deeper into the forest along a rocky and isolated path. After an hour, the tracks led to an old, dilapidated cabin. Seeing it sent a chill down my spine. Inside, there was a basement shrouded in darkness with stairs leading down. I hesitated, but my curiosity pushed me forward. The basement smelled musty, and as I descended the stairs, the silence was so intense it felt like it was suffocating me. In the basement, I found a room with a table covered in papers. Among the papers was a detailed map of the woods. What startled me was the assortment of knives, ropes, and other items designed to cause harm. It was clear that whoever was here had dangerous intentions toward campers. 
Nearby, I found a notebook filled with scribbled notes and strange symbols that I couldn't decipher. The sense of instability and obsession from these items made my skin crawl. I knew I needed to inform the authorities immediately. I quickly fled from the basement, heading back toward my campsite. My nerves were on edge, and I kept glancing over my shoulder to see if anyone was following me. When I reached my campsite, I packed up my gear, feeling an eerie sense that my belongings had been tampered with. Though nothing seemed missing, it was clear someone had been messing with my things. The sense of violation was overwhelming. With my backpack in tow, I started the hike back to my car. The journey was long and intense, with the forest seeming to close in around me. The memories of the night and the shadowy figure haunted me. Once I reached the car, I quickly loaded my gear and locked the doors. As I started the engine, I felt as though someone was watching me. I scanned the tree line but saw no sign of anyone. When I reached the nearest town, I went straight to the local police station and gave my statement. They took my account seriously and promised to investigate. That time, I decided to completely avoid nighttime forest trips. I realized that remote and isolated places bring not only peace, but also danger. I began choosing group camping trips and well-traveled areas to ensure my safety and peace of mind. This experience will always stay with me, and I vowed never to venture alone into the woods again. Our group decided to plan a camping trip this time, and I organized a plan to camp in a remote forest area with my friends. This place was quite far from the city, and it took us a few hours to reach there. We were all excited and ready for an adventurous experience. When we arrived, we cleared the ground and set up our campsite. The place was incredibly beautiful but felt a bit isolated. We lit a campfire and planned to share ghost stories as usual in the evening light. Sitting around the campfire, we shared our experiences and stories. Everyone told their own version of scary tales, some about ghostly sounds, others about eerie experiences that had once frightened them. We all enjoyed some laughter and jokes, but as our stories reached their climax, a strange breeze began to blow. As the night grew deeper, the wind and darkness intensified, and we decided to head to our tents. At night, when everyone had gone into their sleeping bags, I found myself unable to sleep. I couldn't rest because of the campfire's light and some unsettling thoughts running through my mind. The effect of my friend's scary stories was still lingering. As the night went on, a strange rustling sound began to be heard in the air. At first, I thought it was just the wind and the sounds of the night, but gradually, it felt like something was more ominous. Eventually, I saw a silhouette moving around our campsite. I squinted to see it clearly, and it was definitely in a human shape. I thought about waking my friends, but I also worried that it might make them more anxious. I slowly reached for my flashlight and tried to illuminate the shadow, but it gradually disappeared and moved away from our campsite. My heart was racing, and the sound of everyone else sleeping made me feel even more uneasy. The night passed, and morning came. As the first rays of sunlight dispelled the darkness, we decided to investigate what we had seen. We started exploring around the camping area and found some strange footprints near our campsite. These footprints were human-sized and led straight to an old, dilapidated cabin. We decided to explore the cabin, and as we approached, we found it old and in disrepair, so we initially thought it might be a mundane sight. However, when we looked inside, everything was different. The cabin was filled with broken furniture, old glass bottles, and some strange items. The most disturbing thing we found was a wall covered with numerous old photographs. Some of these photos were ghostly and old, and one of them showed us sitting by the campfire. It became clear that the shadow we had seen the previous night was connected to someone who had taken those photos of us. In a corner of the cabin, we found an old diary. As we flipped through its pages, we came across disturbing and unsettling entries. The diary described experiences related to disturbances at night and mentioned that someone had claimed this forest as their domain, intolerant of anything out of place. This discovery terrified us. It suggested that the cabin might have been a ritualistic place for someone. After examining everything, we decided that we needed to leave the place immediately. Our sense of peace and comfort was completely gone, and our trip now felt very unsettling. 
We quickly packed up our gear and headed back to town. We were left with the realization that we had encountered a place of isolation and danger. Once we reached town, we promptly informed the local authorities and reported everything. They took our report seriously and promised to investigate. This experience served as a learning moment for us. We decided to avoid remote and isolated places in the future. From now on, we would choose safer, well-traveled areas for our group trips. This adventure became a story we always share with our friends, but we also learned the importance of never underestimating safety and caution. I've always had a passion for hiking and exploring. Back in 2003, I decided to tackle a hike in the Sierra Nevada mountains. I had meticulously prepared for the trip, packing my backpack, navigation tools, sleeping bag, and other necessary gear. After a long drive, I parked my car, grabbed my backpack, and set off towards the mountains. The trail was quite extensive, and I ended up hiking for several hours longer than I had anticipated. After a while, I stopped at a spot to rest and hydrate, then resumed my hike. As I ventured deeper into the forest, I noticed that the trail was quite old and appeared to be rarely used. This added a sense of adventure, and I felt compelled to explore this less traveled path. At first, everything seemed fine. However, as I progressed, the forest became denser and more untamed. All I could hear was the sound of the trees and the rustling of the wind. As I continued, the solitude of my surroundings started to weigh on me. The deeper I went, the more I felt the profound sense of isolation. After a few hours of hiking, I came across a structure that peeked through the trees. As I got closer, I realized it was an old, abandoned cabin. The place looked as if it hadn't been visited in years, giving off an eerie, forsaken vibe. It seemed like an old relic, covered in moss and vines, with its doors and windows barely hanging on. Just looking at the cabin sent a chill down my spine. I debated with myself whether I should enter or not, but since the purpose of my trip was exploration, my curiosity pushed me forward. The area around the cabin smelled quite unpleasant. Despite feeling a bit scared, my curiosity drove me to approach the cabin. I slowly made my way to it and stood on the creaky porch. As I gently pushed the door open, a cloud of dust fell over me. I brushed off my clothes and stepped inside. The interior was even darker and more dust-filled than I expected. With only a few beams of sunlight streaming through gaps in the walls, illuminating the thick layer of dust inside. Inside, I saw an old table surrounded by dilapidated furniture. On one side was a rusty stove, and on the other was a narrow staircase leading to a loft. The cabin was completely overgrown, with personal items like clothes, books, and muddy boots scattered around. At the edge of the table was a small trunk. I approached it and tried to open it revealing a diary inside. I picked it up and began reading. After a while, it became clear that the diary belonged to a couple sharing their life experiences. They had sold everything to move into this isolated cabin and initially enjoyed a happy life there. However, soon after, they began experiencing strange occurrences in the cabin. As I read, my heart began to race and my hands trembled. The diary described how they had first seen a dead owl outside the cabin. Then, they started hearing footsteps at night. Their pet dog had also been found dead outside the cabin, with strange crawl marks on its body. They had observed these marks on the trees and elsewhere. My fear intensified, and my heart pounded so loudly it felt like it might burst. The diary further detailed their decision to leave the cabin, suspecting either a disturbing human presence or a frightening creature threatening their lives. I quickly scanned the cabin and its rooms, which were covered in dust and gave off an unsettling vibe. It was getting dark, and my anxiety grew. I had no intention of staying any longer. The place was now too dangerous. As soon as I opened the cabin door and stepped outside, I felt like I could hear strange noises. An eerie sensation came over me. I looked around and saw a vague movement through the forest, but it was too indistinct to identify. I started running my heart racing so fast I felt like it might stop and I might collapse right there. Darkness enveloped me, and I felt as though this might be my last night, that I might not escape. After about thirty minutes of running, I reached the trail where I had started my hike. It was around eleven p.m. 
I sat down, relieved to be back, and found solace in the presence of other hikers and campers. I didn't mention the cabin to anyone. That night, sleep was elusive, as I kept thinking about the cabin and its mysterious diary. The next morning, I packed up camp and left the forest. The haunting feeling lingered, and I decided to investigate the cabin's history. I visited the local library and checked old records and newspapers, but found nothing significant, only hearing that some hikers had gone missing in that area due to a mysterious creature. This experience has never left my mind. Even now, whenever I visit forests or isolated areas, I remember that old cabin and feel as though someone might be watching me. This story constantly reminds me never to take unknown places lightly and always to stay cautious. That night was the most terrifying of my life, one I wish neither to remember nor to think about. But the reason I'm sharing this story is to highlight that sometimes life presents events that are better left forgotten, as there's no benefit in dwelling on them. This happened in October 1999, after I had suffered a significant business loss and was deep in debt. I was utterly broken, and my wife had left me. During those days, there was one friend who stood by me, a man named Brett. He was the only one who supported me through that sorrow and trouble, telling me not to worry, assuring me that even this tough time would pass. Brett suggested that I clear my mind by going on a camping trip with him. Despite my lack of enthusiasm, Brett convinced me to go camping, with the aim of helping me clear my head and gain some perspective. It was a Friday and we set out for camping and hiking. He suggested a deep woods area where we could spend some time alone, away from people, in a secluded place. I also agreed that I wanted to stay away from people for a few days now. After reaching the deep area, we parked our car in the parking lot, picked up our backpacks, and headed into the jungle. Every step was difficult in the July heat. Brett was always full of enthusiasm and was constantly searching for the perfect campsite. After searching for a while, we found an open area near a river and started setting up camp. I said to Brett, Wow, that's a lovely place, he replied. Yes, it is. While we were setting up the tent, we suddenly heard some noises. I asked Brett, Hey Brett, did you hear something? His eyes were wide with surprise and he replied, Yes, it sounds like some people are around. He then asked me, What the hell is that? How can there be voices in such an isolated place? We could hear the voices of men coming from the jungle path. We walked around a bit and discovered another campsite nearby where three men were sitting around a fire. When they noticed us, they fell silent. The largest man kept staring at us, and I felt a sense of unease. I told Brett to keep moving forward. As we returned to our camp, I had a feeling that something was wrong. I expressed my concerns to Brett, but he reassured me, saying, Hey, you don't need to worry. I will manage. I replied, Okay, okay. We both had dinner and shared our thoughts. I opened up to Brett about the sad moments in my life, and he listened quietly, which made me feel at ease. Jake then asked, Now how are you feeling? Are you enjoying this? I said, Yes, my mind feels relaxed. I thanked Brett for giving me such a good time during my bad days. We were quite tired from the hiking we had done earlier, and it was getting late. We went into our tent and prepared to sleep. At 1 a.m., I was suddenly awakened by a noise. The glow of the fire was slowly fading and I could hear footsteps outside. I quietly nudged Brett awake, whispering, Hey Brett, wake up. He rubbed his eyes and asked, What's wrong? I replied, I hear some noises coming from outside. He exclaimed, What? And then suddenly looked alarmed and scared, realizing he could hear the noises too. We both quietly crawled out of the tent. To our shock, we saw men extinguishing our campfire. And they were armed. We quickly dashed out of the tent and hid behind some bushes. I turned to Brett and asked, What's happening? Who are these people? And why are they ruining our campsite? One of the men came very close to our hiding spot. I crouched down among the leaves by the water's edge, my heart racing. His flashlight moved near the water and I closed my eyes, fearing we would be caught. We waited for hours, hoping they would leave. Finally, when they were gone, we slowly emerged from the water and saw that our campsite had been destroyed. Everything was scattered. We picked up whatever we could find and kept moving, constantly glancing around in fear. The hike back to the car was incredibly difficult. 
We heard noises and veered off the trail into the jungle. Brett stumbled and injured his ankle. I helped him up, and we continued on, determined to escape. We found a small cave where we spent a few hours hiding. When we finally emerged, the jungle was completely silent. We searched for a path and slowly made our way up a steep incline. I supported Brett as we climbed, and when we reached the top, we saw lights in the distance. It was the parking lot where we had left the car. Upon reaching the parking lot, we noticed two men near our car, searching through it. We hid behind some bushes for a few hours, waiting for them to leave. Eventually, they did. We approached the car to inspect it, only to find that the windows had been shattered and the interior was in disarray. One of the tires was slashed and the side mirrors were broken. I was relieved that the engine was fine. After removing the spare tire, I changed it. The car started, but the fuel line had been cut. I began to repair it with duct tape. I told Brett to hurry up and drive the car. We needed to get out of there. While Jake was trying to start the car, a man approached from the side, holding a long knife. Brett was struggling to start the car. He tried many times but couldn't get it running. Just then, the man moved closer. I grabbed a tire jack rod from the back seat. Suddenly, the man stabbed Brett in the chest with the knife. That moment was filled with terror. I could see blood streaming from Brett's white shirt. He opened the door and pulled Brett out, and I also opened my door and got out. I saw Brett on the ground, and in a desperate act, I struck the man on the head with the rod. He fell to the ground, writhing in pain. I tried to keep Brett conscious, but he was losing too much blood, and he succumbed to his injuries. From behind, I noticed a black truck speeding towards us. I had to save myself. I lifted Brett's body into the car and tried to start it again. This time, luck was on my side and the car started. I quickly sped away from the scene. I drove the car quickly down the forest road and took a sharp turn, crossing over to the wrong side of the highway. I had left that truck far behind. I doubt I could ever fully express to anyone what that moment was like for me. Every second felt like a terrifying eternity where my life was at risk. I tried my best to lift Brett, but he couldn't get up. With all my strength, I drove to the nearest hospital, but upon arrival, I learned that he had already passed away. He had lost his life that night. I still feel the terror of that night, like a needle piercing through my memory, which is why I never want to remember that day. The police contacted me a few months later to inform me that they had arrested the men responsible for the attack. They were linked to several cases involving lost hikers and murders targeting campers in deep woods areas, killing them, and burying their bodies so that they would never be found while stealing their belongings. Brett is no longer with us. Discussing everything I witnessed is difficult for me. I rarely mention it to anyone, as it serves as a reminder of the dark days in my life. It was a moment filled with fear and trauma that still makes my heart race whenever I think about it. This happened to us back in 2006, when my friend and I decided to take on the Bright Angel Trail in Arizona, despite hearing stories about hikers who had gotten lost in the area. We believed that fear only becomes real when confronted directly, so we viewed this trek as an exciting adventure, completely unaware of what awaited us. The trail was undoubtedly challenging, but we had a solid plan in place. All of us were experienced hikers, though we understood that overconfidence can be perilous. The next day, we selected a particularly demanding trail that promised breathtaking views. We set out early in the morning, our backpacks filled with supplies, knowing that while the hike would be long, we were ready to manage it. At the beginning, the trail was in great condition. There were clear markers, and we were passing through dense forests and rocky terrain. We started off at a good pace, feeling confident in our strength. However, after several hours without seeing any trail markers, we began to realize that something was amiss. At first, we tried to maintain our calm. We recalled everything we had read about getting lost in the wilderness. But the difference between theory and practice became painfully clear when we discovered that our map and compass were no longer reliable. Our phones, which had served as our lifelines, were now useless without a signal. Although we had prepared our navigation tools, they were outdated, and we found ourselves deep in an area of the forest 
where traditional navigation systems were failing. Imagine being in an isolated area with limited supplies. That was exactly our situation. It was a daunting realization, and we knew we had to think clearly and act wisely to find our way back. As evening approached, our panic began to rise. The sun was slowly dipping below the horizon, and the temperature was dropping. The forest started to feel like a strange and frightening place. We urgently needed shelter, so we searched for a small clearing that would provide some protection from the wind. The night turned out to be long and difficult. Every sound, a distant howl, the creaking of branches, made us increasingly anxious. My imagination was running wild, and I couldn't help but think that bears, mountain lions, and other terrifying creatures were lurking in the darkness. The silence of the jungle was so profound that if a pin dropped, you would hear it. Any animal, even from a distance, made its presence known with a sound that echoed through the night. The calls of the coyotes sounded as if they were right beside us, heightening our sense of unease. My partner tried to reassure me, but even their voice betrayed a hint of fear. Neither of us slept much that night. We simply waited for dawn, which felt like it would never arrive. When morning finally came, it brought a glimmer of hope. We quickly packed our gear and attempted to retrace our steps, but everything felt unfamiliar. The terrain had become increasingly rough, with steep inclines and treacherous descents. At one point, we had to cross a fast-moving stream. The icy water knocked me off my feet, and I fell onto loose rocks, spraining my ankle in the process. This added another layer of difficulty to our situation. Our supplies were dwindling rapidly. We rationed our food and water, but dehydration was setting in quickly. Headaches, dizziness, and an unquenchable thirst plagued both of us. The protein bars and trail mix that once seemed delicious now felt like life-saving essentials. We knew we had to keep moving, but every step was becoming increasingly challenging. While we were wandering in the wilderness, I heard about several hikers who had gone missing in the deep woods of Arizona. These lost hikers had ventured out unplanned, and even experienced hikers can sometimes panic due to fear on such challenging trails, leading to dangerous situations. We kept reassuring each other not to panic. When we finally stopped to rest by a fallen tree, the weight of the situation hit me fully. We were completely lost, with very few supplies left, and it felt as if something was hunting us. Nightfall approached quickly. We found a small cave formed by fallen boulders to take shelter in. We didn't even light a fire because we were afraid it would attract unwanted attention. That night was filled with strange noises, rustling underbrush, distant howls, and a scream that disturbingly sounded human. We hardly slept, just waiting for morning to come. In the morning, filled with renewed hope, I noticed a hawk circling overhead. My partner suggested that we follow it, as birds of prey often hover near water sources. It was a desperate plan, but we had no other options. We began to trail the hawk, and after a while we stumbled upon a small stream. Alongside the stream we also found a faded trail marker. As we followed the stream, we encountered another marker, which reignited our determination. Progress was slow due to exhaustion and the rough terrain, but soon we began to hear human voices. To our relief we spotted park rangers who were searching for us. They provided us with water and emergency rations and assessed our situation. The rangers treated our injuries and dehydration and helped us find our way out. If I had been alone that day, I might have become one of those lost hikers whose whereabouts remain unknown. Many have lost their lives in those vast forests, and the worst part is that once a person realizes they are lost on the trail and their supplies are running low, panic can set in, leading to dire consequences. We learned just how dangerous it can be to underestimate the wilderness due to overconfidence. This experience served as a powerful reminder that we must always approach nature with respect and caution.